In this short video, we're going to look at some examples where we use the technique of change of variables to evaluate double integrals. So let's go back to our example from the previous video. We had the double integral over this diamond region D of 3x plus 6y in parentheses squared. In the previous video, we said that if we use the transformation u equals x minus 2y, v equals x plus 2y, or alternative x equals 1 half the sum u plus v, y equals 1 quarter the difference v minus u, that in the uv plane, the image of d is this d hat region, which is just a square. Now, in order to evaluate this integral using the uv coordinates, I need to calculate the Jacobian of x, y with respect to u, v. So I'll need to take the partial of x with respect to u, the partial of y with respect to u, partial of x with respect to v, the partial of y with respect to v. And so I went ahead and did that partial of x with respect to u, it just gives me a half partial of y with respect to u is a negative one fourth and the partials with respect to v are one half and one fourth respectively. Calculate the determinant of that, I get one eighth minus a negative one eighth, so that's two eighths, which will be a quarter. So evaluating the integral, I don't need to do too much work if I factor out the three from the integrand, what's left inside is x plus 2y, and x plus 2y is exactly v. So the integrand is just going to wind up being 3v three in, 3 in parentheses squared. I'll have to multiply that times the absolute value of the Jacobian, which was positive anyway, a positive constant. So filling in my bounds of integration, uh, I can go ahead and now evaluate this integral. So uh, squaring this will give me a 9 um, times the 1 fourth is 9 fourths. I'm taking the integral with respect to u first, so v squared is a constant. I'll bring that out in front. And uh, so I'll just wind up multiplying that times 4, so I get 9. And I'll take the derivative, I mean antiderivative, of v squared. And that'll be 1 third v cubed. 1 third of 9 is 3. Evaluate that between negative 2 and 2. And I'll get 16 times 3, which is 48. In our second example, we're asked to evaluate uh, the double integral over the region R of E raised to the power of the quotient x plus y over x minus y dA. Uh, so evaluating that antiderivative uh, would be very challenging if I had to evaluate the antiderivative with respect to x or with respect to y. R is a trapezoidal region with the vertices here. Let's go ahead and draw that. The boundary lines, well, the lower line is y equals x minus 2, which we can read. The other slanting line is x minus y equals 1. And then we have the line segments on the x and y axis. Now, this suggests, and I'm not going to say that it's obvious that the transformation that we could use would be uh, v equals x minus y. That would come from these slanting lines. And then u equals x plus y. Why x plus y? Because that's what I have in my integrand up here is x plus y. So let's see what this trapezoid looks like in the uv plane. So I can solve these two for x and y. So x will be 1 half u plus v, and y will be 1 half u minus v. Again, I'm going to labor, label my line segments here, s1, s2, s3, and s4. Uh, the equation 
for S1 gets mapped onto V equals two. S2, which is just Y equals zero, that just gets mapped onto V equals U. I'm looking at this equation here. If Y equals zero, then V must equal U. Uh, S3 is another slanting line, and so it's X minus Y equals one. So that means V equals one. And S4, this is where X equals zero. So looking at this equation, that would imply that V equals negative U. So if I draw those four lines in the UV plane, what's the region enclosed by those four lines is this region S, which is another trapezoid, but it is a uh, type two region. It has a right curve, V equals U, and a left curve, V equals negative U. And then, um, v goes between one and two. So I guess I would rewrite those as, really I want to think of that as u equals v and u equals negative v if I'm thinking of this as a type two region. But the real bonus here is not the uh, region becoming simpler. The bonus is the integrand becoming simpler. So first let's calculate the Jacobian. So the partials with respect to u are going to be one half and one half. Partials with respect to v are one half and negative one half. So let's just go ahead and imagine we're taking the determinant here. Take one half times negative one half, subtract off, one half times one half, that'll be negative one fourth minus one fourth, that'll be minus two fourths or minus one half. So now let's convert our integral. I can see that now my uh, exponent on E is U over V. I'll have to multiply that times the absolute value of the Jacobian and fill in my bounds of integration. So type two region, uh, I'm, I have my curves here, which I said were u equals negative v for my lower bound, u equals v for my upper bound. Really, this is my left bound and my right bound. That's my bounds on u. My bounds on v, one to two. I need to take the absolute value of my Jacobian. And I rewrote this as one over V times U. Why? Because V is a constant. When I'm taking respect to U. So I really just have a constant times U, antiderivative, uh, instant times U is fairly simple. The antiderivative is just going to be V times e to the u over v. And if we're a little bit puzzled, we could go ahead and take the derivative of e uh, raised to the u over v, well, times v. Well, v is a constant. Now, the partial with respect to u would tell me I need to use the chain rule, so I'd get a factor of 1 over v. The v's will divide out, and I'm left with my original integrand of e raised to the power of u over v. Now I'm going to have to evaluate that for u equals negative v and u equals v. So that's convenient because then my exponent's just going to be uh, v over v or negative v over v. I'll just get one or negative one for the exponent. Now let's take the antiderivative with respect to v. So the e to the power of negative one is the same as one over e. So I get this constant one fourth um, parentheses e minus one over e times v squared. 
evaluate that from one to two, and I get three quarters parentheses E minus one over E. In our next example, we're going to try to evaluate the double integral over the region R of radical 4x squared plus 1 ninth y squared dA, where R is a region enclosed by an eclipse. And we're given the transformation x equals u over 2, y equals 3v. So let's see what this ellipse looks like in the uv plane. Replace x with u over 2, y with 3v. Do some algebra. Multiply both sides by 4, and we see that it becomes a circle. The ellipse becomes a circle in the uv plane. And so our region of integration s is just the disk, u squared plus v squared less than or equal to 4. So the disk centered at the origin with radius 2. All right, let's go ahead and calculate the Jacobian then. I need the partials with u. Uh, well, uh, x only depends on u, so partial of x with respect to u is 1 half. Uh, y has no u term, so its partial derivative with respect to u is 0. On the other hand, if I take the partial of x with respect to v, I also get 0, and the partial of y with respect to v is 3. So take the determinant 1 half times 3 minus 0, so the, the Jacobian is just 3 halves. So now our, the integrand, uh, I'll go ahead and replace x with u over 2 and y with 3v. Multiply that out and do some simplification. I wind up with radical u squared plus v squared. All right, so let's go ahead and convert to uh, our uv coordinates. I would have the double integral over that disk. Now my integrand is radical u squared plus v squared. And my Jacobian would be the absolute value of 3 halves, which of course is 3 halves. So look at this. I have a radical u squared plus v squared as my integrand. My region of integration is a disk. It's a polar region. So we're going to make yet another change of variables to polar. In this case, u equals r cosine theta, v equals r sine theta u squared plus v squared equals r squared, and du dv gets converted to r dr d theta. So now my disk, my r values go from 0 to 2. I'm going all the way around the disk, so theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, radical u squared plus v squared just turns out to be r for my integrand, and then du dv is now r dr d theta. Now let's evaluate that. That would give me r squared. Antiderivative of r squared would be one third r cubed. So that turns my three halves into one third. I'll evaluate that between zero and two. That will just give me eight. And now I just have a, a constant. Uh, so the integral from zero to two pi of one d theta will just give me two pi. And multiply that times a third. I'll get 16 pi over 3. So we saw in example 2, we had a, a very troublesome integrand, and our, our transformation helped us evaluate the antiderivative. In our last example, we have a, a very complex region of integration and a fairly complex integrand as well. So our region here is bounded by three parabolas and the y-axis, and we're looking at the part of, I mean, the x-axis. We're looking at the part above the x-axis where uh, y is greater than or equal to zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the transformation x equals one-half u squared minus v squared 
y equals uv, and we're going to insist that v in this transformation cannot be negative. v must be greater than or equal to zero. This is actually similar to the transformation we used in our first example, uh, but not quite. And these are called parabolic coordinates. So we have polar coordinates. These are parabolic coordinates. All right, so uh, what do I need to do? I need to find out what does this region look like under this transformation? What does it look like in the UV plane? What is its image under this transformation? So again, I'm going to have these four curves. So I'll label them curves C1 to C2, C3 through C4, and I'd like to find the image of each one of those curves. So we'll start with our line segment, which is y equals 0. And that goes from x equals 1 half up to x equals 2. And so since y equals 0 from our uh, transformation, that means uv equals 0. So u would have to equal 0, or v would have to equal 0. But let's look at the, each case there. If u equals 0, then x would have to be negative v squared. x would have to be negative. But in our case, x is positive. So I can't have u equals 0. That leads to a contradiction. And these two arrows pointing at each other, that's our mathematical short down shorthand for saying this is a contradiction. So we're going to see that throughout this example that we're going to reach a contradiction because we're going to wind up with having two choices and one will lead to a contradiction. So in this case, u equals zero leads to a contradiction. So u cannot equal zero. What we must have is v equal to zero, which would mean that x equals one half u squared. And so now let's see what would our bounds be on u for this curve, one half u squared less than or equal to two. And so that says u squared would vary from one to four, meaning that u must vary from one to two. Okay. So our image of C1 is the line segment v equals zero and u goes between one and two. Let's look at curve, the next curve, C2, which is part of this parabola. And its inputs go from y equals 0 up to y equals 4. So I'll go ahead and substitute my formulas for the transformation. It looks pretty scary here. But if I start by multiplying both sides by 2 to clear the, the uh, 1 half away here, uh, I suppose I could have multiplied everything by 8, but this works out OK. And then I'm going to make one side equal to 0. I have four terms here, and I'm going to use a technique we learned in basic algebra called factoring by grouping. I'm going to look for the common factor in the first two terms and a common factor in the second two terms. And so the, a common factor that I can take out here is 1 quarter u squared. Now I'll have to multiply this, this first term is just u squared. So if I factor out 1 quarter u squared and instead of just 1. Then I can factor out a negative 1 here, and then I'll have in parentheses 4 plus v squared. Now, I'm not done with my factorization now. The 4 plus v squared is a common factor. And so I get 1 quarter u squared minus 1, parentheses 4 plus v squared equals 0. So the second binomial here can never equal 0 which means that 1 quarter u squared minus 1 would have to equal 0. 
which would lead to two solutions, either u equals two or u equals negative two. So let's examine each one. If u uh, equals negative two, then y would equal negative two v. But remember v uh, in our transformation must be non-negative. It must be greater than or equal to zero. And so this would say that v, which is supposed to be a positive number, would be make negative 2v a negative number. But in our curve, y is never negative. So that would be a contradiction. Which means that we must be left with u equals 2. So y will equal 2v. And now we can get our bounds. So uh, 2v would go from 0 to 4. So v would go from 0 to 2. All right. So then the image of our second curve is another line segment, u equals 2. And v goes from 0 to 2. Let's look at the image of the third curve. This is part of a parabola as well. So we'll do the same technique. We'll go ahead and substitute for x and y using our transformation. We'll multiply through by half. We'll make one side equal to 0. We'll use factoring by grouping. Now, this term 1 quarter u squared plus 1, that can never be 0. So 4 minus v squared must equal to 0, which means v equals 2. I can't have v equal to negative 2 because in our transformation, v cannot equal uh, a negative number. So um, that means that y is going to be 2u, just going from this equation here. And so if I have 2u in the middle here, that means u must go from 1 to 2. So the image of our third curve is another line segment. This time v equals 2, and u goes from 1 to 2. So it's nice that both of the v equals line segments have the same bounds on u. All right. The image of the last curve. So that is, the curve is, again, a different parabola with the equation 1 half minus 1 half y squared. But we'll take the same steps. We'll go ahead and replace x and y with their formulas with u and v. I'll multiply through by 2. And I've cleared the fractions. I'll set that equal to 0. I'll use factoring by grouping, and that leads me to p squared plus 1, which is never 0, and then u squared minus 1 would equal 0. So you would have to be either 1 or negative 1. But we get into the same contradiction we've seen before. If u equals negative 1, then y would equal negative v, or v equals negative y. But that would be a problem, because then v would be negative, and v has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that's a contradiction. So we can't have u equal to negative 1. u must equal 1, which leads to y equaling v, and our bounds on v are 0 to 2. So I should have now, this is my last line segment. I have four line segments in the UV plane. This very complicated image gets mapped into a simple rectangle. So now let's see if we can evaluate the integral. I'll need the uh, to calculate the Jacobian. So let's start with the partials with respect to u. So the partial of x with respect to u, I've got the 1 half times 2u, that just gives me u. The partial of y with respect to u is just v. 
the partial of x with respect to v is a negative v, and the partial of y with respect to v is u. So if I calculate the determinant, I'll get u squared minus a negative v squared, which is u squared plus v squared. So that's never going to be negative. I really don't need the absolute value signs on this Jacobian, uh, but we'll put them in just to practice. What about the integrand? Well, I have one over radical x squared plus y squared. So let's just look at x squared plus y squared first. Again, I'll do the replacement for x and y. I went ahead and used uh, foil to multiply out u squared minus v squared all squared to get u to the power of 4 minus 2 u squared v squared plus v to the power of 4. And of course, 1 half squared gives me 1 fourth. And then y squared is u squared plus v squared. So what I'd like to do is bring this u squared plus v squared inside the brackets. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and multiply it times 4 and multiply it times 1 fourth. Um, why would I do that? So I can factor out the 1 fourth when I bring it inside the parentheses or inside the brackets. I have 4 u squared v squared and the 1 fourth still stays outside the brackets. And now I have like terms. I have a negative 2 u squared v squared plus 4 u squared v squared. Let's combine those like terms and look what's inside the uh, brackets now. It's the square of a binomial. That is u squared plus v squared quantity squared. So that would be x squared plus y squared, but I really want 1 over radical x squared plus y squared. So let's start by taking the radical. That will give me half, and then uh, in parentheses, u squared plus v squared. So now let's look at our integral. The reciprocal of this would be 2 over u squared plus v squared. I put in the absolute values because that's in the formula, but I know u squared plus v squared is never negative. du dv, and I'm just left with putting in the bounds, but s is just a rectangle which with sides parallel to the coordinate axes, so it's really just going to give me constant bounds. Uh, 0 to 2 on v and 1 to 2 on u. And since the, I don't need the absolute values here, the u squared plus v squared divides it out, and I just left with a constant. So this will just be twice the area of this rectangle, which is 4. So here's an example where, yes, we had to do a lot of work to find the right region. Uh, but after we're, we did that, uh, the integrand or the integral was trivial to evaluate.